Hello everyone, my name is Alex Gomez and welcome to my channel. On today's video, we're gonna be sculpting Clint Eastwood in Blender. Yes, in Blender, finally. So I'm gonna take you to the process. Uh, I'm gonna tell you what I learned, what I like, what I dislike, and some of the pros and cons between uh, Blender and ZBrush. If you're new to this channel and you like digital sculpting and 3D content, please subscribe, comment, like, share, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post a video every Friday. So let's get to it, guys. Okay, so starting the blockout, I start with just a normal spheres, uh, primitive shapes. That's what I normally do when I decide to block out the character. I start uh, chipping up the skull, chipping up the the face uh, and the, the head uh, depending on the um, on the design also another thing that I do is identifying the kind of like uh, the sharpest uh, or the most uh, uh, significant shapes in the in the design so for example in this case the it's gonna be the sharp jaw, the really like pronounced uh, cheekbones, uh, the top of the head that is kind of like a, it comes in a kind of like a cone-ish uh, shape. Um, I then start like, kind of like a putting where I think the eyes, nose, and mouth is gonna be but without getting into too many details. I just want to get a, a better sense of how my character is looking and definitely it's gonna look like a skull right now and it doesn't matter that it looks like a skull because we're gonna be moving from that stage eventually. If you're sculpting your characters, you're gonna see that your character is always gonna look funny in the beginning. But you have to work at it, like you have to keep working and uh, you're gonna see that they're gonna take shape. Don't get discouraged if you're gonna see that your character looks like very crappy and it looks like a, like in this case, it looks probably like a zombie apocalypse. But then after I decided to to move on and, and, and identify the the pronounced shapes, uh, I start kind of like adding a little bit more details. And in this case, for this uh, sculpt, I just decided to use, use Remesh. I think like Remesh works a lot like Dynamesh and Dynotop works a lot like sculpted, uh, sculpted trees. Bro. So having the understanding really make my, my life in Blender sculpting like way easier. So, because now I know like a remesh and um, for me, it pretty much works really good with the resolution of 0 0.03 or 0 0.02 and I, I get good results from it. So that's something that I didn't know how well it works. Now that I know, I just uh, understand a little bit so I can get like better results and better resolution in, in the shapes. Something that I didn't get in my past sculpt, but you know, even I, I have added some details to my model and now it's time for me to kind of like uh, work a little bit more in the proportions. I know sometimes you guys see some other digital artists or digital sculptors in another videos that they just go and from the block out and they have the perfect shape. I don't know how they do it. For me, it takes more time for me just uh, I kind of like, uh, you know, start sculpting and look at my reference and keep sculpting and uh, look at proportions. And, and in the meantime that uh, my sculpt is being developed or I make more progress, I identify that there's some things that are not proportionate, that they're not according with the design or I just don't like liking them as much. So definitely, I, I definitely recommend that you guys don't stick like, a, okay, so just because your block out is already perfect, like everything is gonna perfect, no, you're gonna keep changing your proportions as well. So uh, uh, as long as you 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 keep uh, very close to the model and or to the design, you're gonna see that you're gonna end up like working in your proportions even though you have put like a bunch of details into your model array. And I still like I, even though after I did the hair, I, I think I work in some of my proportions for this model as well. 
So the head in this process was pretty simple. I just uh, create um, a cylinder and then I just kind of like create some of the sharp edges that I think were gonna be kind of like a sharp stylized. Uh, I did it in object mode. I could have done it probably like a, just to draw it in a sculpting mode, but I just did it like a, you know, just crease the edges and, and uh, gave me like a really nice sharp uh, and neat edges uh, to work for the head, for the hair, sorry. So one of the things that I really like about, about Blender is that like I'm more comfortable to do um, a hard surface uh, or polygonal modeling in a tree software like, uh, like Blender or Maya. I might uh, start doing some tutorials on um, um, some hard surface like stylized uh, props and stuff like that. But, uh, but what I really like for me it's that I can just go back and forward between sculpting mode and object mode, so I can just uh, definitely like uh, like add some um, some shapes. As this case I did with, for example, the um, the shirt, the tie, uh, and the jacket was all made like a, as, a, as a polygonal. But yeah, definitely I've been liking Blender more and more. Yeah, I've been getting more comfortable with the tools and uh, how everything works. I've been working with Maya for so long, like it's been like uh, since 2005 I've been working with Maya, so it's been a, a long time for, for me. It's a little bit uh, different to to kind of like a wrap my, my head around Blender, which is a really good software. Um, other thing that I use for my renders is Redshift. And, uh, and now there is a new version for Redshift uh, for uh, for Blender. So it is, it is good, but yeah, uh, when I was rendering this character, kind of like it became a little bit frustrated because it was taking a little bit long to load the plugin, to load materials, and uh, something that doesn't happen with Maya. So I have to check what's going on with that. But definitely, definitely, like if uh, Redshift keep developed. Be developing these for Blender, I definitely make the switch because the Redshift is insanely, insanely fast. I have the license for it, and uh, you guys can give it a try in Blender, in Maya, or uh, in a, a, any other software, Houdini, Cinema 4D that you guys use. It's definitely worth a try because you're gonna be surprised how much faster this uh, GPU rendering is and, and it's amazing like uh, you get like in instant results and uh, you sometimes like kind of like a you can do it with Eevee and it's fine and you can have like a or cycles but trust me when I tell you like a red chip is insanely fast one of the things that I didn't understand in Blender sculpting was uh, for example, when I create a primitive and then I put it in a, in a sculpting mode, there was something super weird going on with my move tool. So I couldn't move it good. And I knew that in order to move, you have to kind of like a freeze all the transformations or, or a set up or I don't know, like reset the transformations. Don't remember how you say it in Blender, but uh, yeah. So so everything is on serious. The scales, the trans, uh, translations, the rotations, they have to be all in serious for for uh, for the brushes to be able to behave in in a in a good way. So it's, that was happening to me when I was uh, doing the the eyebrows and I was just repeating and repeating and I was like, what's going on? And definitely I had some of the scale uh, in, has some numbers there. So I have to reset those transformations in the, in the scale of that object for be, for be able to, to work. So yeah, so for example, like uh, this case, probably like uh, in ZBrush would have been a little bit faster, but I get like a nicer and, and better shapes or sharp edges if I use kind of like a polygonal modeling like that. And I just like, I, I like to model as well. That's my, my other, uh, second thing that I like to do. I like a lot of sculpting, modeling, and, and what I do for work right now, I do a lot of lighting. So so definitely, like, uh, I, I don't know. I just find the switch between object uh, object mode and sculpting mode, it's, it's great because it, it, for me, it's been a little bit hard and tough to do kind of like a hard surface modeling in in uh, ZBrush, so 
that's something that I really like. Even though, like, I think like Zero, she's amazing for for sculpting. It's just like unbelievable the the, the experience that you have. Uh, sometimes I just jump back and forth between Blender and Zero, and uh, it's just the feeling is is different. It just uh, has a different feeling. I still like uh, is the sculpting mode in um, in Blender. I think it still has like uh, some ways to go but uh it's going the right way i think i, I think uh, uh blender is gonna be very powerful as a sculpting tool uh, more powerful because they're really really good which is really nice so this is something that i was just telling you before just kind of like increase those edges and when you crease those edges you're gonna see that it gives you like a really really nice sharp edges right there which is really nice and easy you don't have to either like a uh, draw it or anything like that so i leave you with the, here with this render and i hope you guys enjoy this uh, video uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so share comment don't forget to watch my other two videos and take care and have an amazing weekend guys see you later bye